In this video, we're going to crack passwords, learn how to ethically hack into sites by brute forcing accounts and how the same principles and techniques apply to Google, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and much more. We'll also use dictionary attacks to crack hashes and before the end, learn how to defend against password attacks so you can protect your accounts better in the future, be that your personal accounts, work accounts, or the bank account that you have. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's start off with Burp Suite to do a quick test on Google.com. Of course, the same principle applies to TikTok, Twitter, or Instagram, and any other website really that has a login page. Say you want to hack into an account, ethically of course. We fire up Burp Suite, which is a great web application security testing tool, and acts as a proxy between you and the service you're trying to test. In our case, that's Google or Twitter or whatever it would be. Essentially, it's the middleman where you can ask it to manipulate and update any requests that you have to meet your needs and be able to do a thorough test. Let's fire up Burp Suite, which can be downloaded from portswigger.net. We're gonna use the free version because that's all we need for this test. Once the tool is loaded, we select temporary project, use the defaults that come with the tool because that's all we need for this test and start Burp. Now, of course, you do need to make sure that your connection settings are configured correctly for the proxy to work. So we're gonna go ahead to, if you're using Firefox, go to settings, type in proxy in the search, Go to settings again with the network connections and make sure your manual proxy configuration is selected with the host being 127.0.0.1, port 8080, and also that this is configured for HTTPS. So you're able to intercept both HTTP and HTTPS requests. Click OK and we should be good to go. The first thing we want to do within Burp is go to proxy and turn off the intercept because as we see as of right now, it's intercepting everything, which means it will pause all your requests to be held for review. Either you forward the packet or drop the packet or modify it. So in our case, we're gonna turn off intercept. Next, we're gonna to go to gmail.com, our service of choice to be able to conduct the attack or the test as we said. Enter our username, click on next. Now this is the page we wanna to send to Burp to be able to modify and conduct our testing on, the brute force attack that we talked about. So we wanna go back to Burp, make sure intercept is turned on, enter a password, and in our case, I've just typed in test. The reason for this is I wanna be able to track where this appears within the parameter of the password so we can modify it at a later point. We click on next, and as we can see now, it's not doing anything because really what it's done is send it to burp, and here is the request. But it's not quite there yet, so we have to click forward, and here is our request. We'll right click on it and send it to intruder to be able to then select the location of the password and conduct our test. Within intruder, we can go ahead and first of all, clear all the selection for the payloads. Next, we're gonna track our password where we put it. And we can see that the password is right here. We're gonna add these signs on either side of the password, which indicates to Burp that this is the location of the payload, which needs to be changed or updated, right? So once we try cracking the password with different passwords, this is the location that's gonna keep changing. We go to payloads, add a bunch of passwords. So we will say ABC, test one, two, three, and the list goes on and on. Now, ideally, we'd be able to load a list. However, because this is the free version, it does not offer us to be able to add a password file, which would make it a whole lot easier. Now, once you have your list ready, you can start the attack by clicking on Start Attack right here. So, in three, two, one, here we go. FBI, open up! Yeah, see, we can't really do that because it's illegal and you could get into a world of trouble by attempting to hack into something illegally. So how can we crack passwords legally and ethically? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're gonna use two machines in a lab environment. One is the attacking machine or the testing machine that has all the tools in it called Kali Linux. And the other is the target machine which is gonna have an SSH server hosted on it. We're gonna connect them together and conduct our testing. You can download Kali Linux from Kali.org. Simply go to downloads, click on virtual machines because that's what we're gonna use. Depending on whether you have VMware installed or VirtualBox, select the appropriate option. An important point to note is that the username and the password for the default installation is Kali, K-A-L-I. Once we have Kali installed, we can access most tools from the command line here by clicking on Terminal. And of course, an important point to note is that Kali comes with a lot of free tools. For our purposes in this entire lab, we're only gonna be using a few of them. The tool of choice we're gonna be using is Hydra, which is a network login cracker and very simple to use. We also are gonna need the username, the password, or a list of passwords, and the service we're going to be attacking or testing, and also the location of the service, which in our case is gonna be the IP of the target. If you wanna look at the options available, you can click on dash H in front of Hydra, enter that, and you can look at all the switches available to us within Hydra. 
For our purposes, really, all we need is the login, the password, and also ensuring that we stop the test once we have a successful login. We already know the service, which is SSH, and we also already know the IP of the target. The main thing we need along with the username is the list of passwords. We don't want to be manually generating passwords, so we're going to look at the default list installed in Kali Linux by default. Or you can go ahead online and search for some. You can find plenty of lists available for testing purposes. You can find the list in Kali at user share word lists, and these are all the lists available. In our case, we're going to be using john.lst. We do want to see how many passwords are in there, so we're going to do a command wc-l and type in john. Oh, we have to provide the path first. So we do user share word lists and then type in john. And we see that we have 3,559 passwords that we can use right here. That's more than enough to be able to attempt the test. To start off the test, we type in Hydra, provide the login. In our case, it's a single user, so we're providing small l. If we had a list or a file of users that we want to test against different passwords, we provide capital L. So in our case, the username is Chad. We don't have a single password, so we're not going to use a small p. Instead, we're going to use a capital P because we have a file. We provide the path, as we just saw, we can use your share word lists. John is the file. Provide a hyphen F to make sure the test stops. Once it is successful, provide the service that's going to be attacked with the IP address of the target, 100.22. And all we do is hit Enter, and the test starts right away. Well, there we have it. The password was cracked within seconds on this host with the username Chad. The password ended up being Tigger. Now, this is a dictionary attack and not a brute force attack. Brute force attacks take a lot longer, and they will try everything within a certain character set that you provide. Now, let's log into the actual account and see if the login is working. So we do SSH Chad at 192.168.100.22 and provide the password, which is T-I-G-G-E-R, Tigger. And we see that we're actually logged into the account. Now, mind you, this is an online attack. So you're directly interacting with the service. Next, we're going to do an offline attack where we crack a hash, which means that we already have acquired the hash. Cracking hashes is simple enough. We can use tools like John the Ripper or Hashcat or any other for that matter. In our case, we're going to use John. It's a well-known tool, simple to use. We want to have the hash available. So I went ahead and created a hash in MD5, which looks like this. We also are going to use a word list that I've created. So look at the word count on that or the number of passwords. So we see that it has more than 5,000 passwords. What John is going to do is simply take each password, generate a hash for it, and then match that hash to what we provide. And if there's a successful match, it's going to let us know and provide us the actual password as well. So we type in John, provide the location of the hash, which is right here. Add our password file by typing in word list, provide the path. And then the format that we have is MD5. So we're going to type in format equals raw MD5. And we hit enter to crack the password and see what it does. And there we go. That's our password right there. It took really seconds to crack it. And what a great password that is. Please do like and subscribe. <laughs> but really, the reality is it is a password cracking tool where it matches the hashes with the passwords. And if there is a match, it provides the answer just like that. And you could always change the format. If it was a SHA-1 or something, you'd type in SHA-1 for SHA-1, or it could be something else. And you can just type in, do a double tab, and it'll give you a list of what's available to you. It can do SHA-512, 384, so on and so forth. Now, how do you protect against all of this? It's very simple. Use multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication. So even if the hacker or the cracker gets the password, they still will need a second factor authentication, which is typically a code sent to your phone that you get to type in, or it could be some prompt that you get on your phone to type in. And there are well-known apps like Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator that are used for MFA or 2FA. So stay safe, always be ethical, and make sure you carefully test anything that you have and enjoy and learn.